What's going on everybody? Fetter here from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. And it feels like it's been a little while and that's because I have been busy working on this. This is my Voron Trident 300 and it was built uh, from a kit by Fisec. They provided me with this machine, well the kit, uh, in order to build and I have spent well, close to 50 hours in building this thing uh, on live streams that you can probably grab right over here. I should be including a playlist of all of the videos if you guys want to follow along or get a little bit more information. The way that I ended up tackling this is I wanted to do everything in small sections, starting with unboxing and then just putting the frame together and then just in small uh, chunks so that people can follow along. And all of this is not coming from an expert in Voron building that can build one of these in a day. Uh, it is coming from somebody who's never worked on one of these, doesn't really know the design language or at least didn't, right? Uh, so it, it's coming from a total noob uh, in terms of Voron. And uh, that's why it has taken me forever. And actually, uh, I'm really happy that I took my time with this thing because I have learned so much and I'm still learning so much. Um, and it has been a really humbling experience for me personally. I have definitely reviewed uh, almost 50 machines at this point and uh, there's more counting uh, in the queue uh, coming up. Uh, so just when I thought that I, I kind of almost knew it all in a way uh, and was really excited for this new wave of, of printers coming in, this thing has really humbled me and brought me back to earth and I have really like dug deep, especially in Clipper, just to kind of figure things out so I can wrap my mind around them. And it has been extremely fun. And this type of machine is definitely not for everyone. If you guys just heard that little part right there, uh, and they should already tell you who this is for. This is for somebody who really just wants to be a part of the hobby. This is definitely a hobbyist machine. It is not for somebody who wants to unwrap something and start printing uh, because they enjoy printing. You're enjoying printing to the point where you need to calibrate every single little piece of this machine and make it your own and make sure every single thing is working. Uh, with that said, I have about uh, just under 100 hours on this machine currently. Uh, almost all of that is with ABS and I just now finally am really happy with the way that my profiles are running ABS. I printed a bunch of parts for this machine on it and then uh, starting today actually I switched over to PLA. This was the very first PLA print outside of obviously some just uh, minor things like benches and racetrack and like that things like that uh, but it needs a little bit of work but I'm very happy with the way that it's printing I'm very confident that I'll be able to tune these profiles and have a reliable machine for a while. So with that said, that's kind of the TLDR of the entire kit. Uh, but the point of this video is I want to go over the cons, the pros, a few suggestions that I have, just like I do typically for my machines, just to rate the FISA kit. I know there's a lot of other names out there that make uh, Voron kits. And me personally, I haven't really heard that much of FISEC. It doesn't seem to be the one that everybody's kind of talking about. But after digging deeper, even at the unboxing, I was already really impressed and I still am impressed and hopefully I keep uh, working with them to show you guys more of these things because I think they put together some really compelling kits. But what I want to do is I'm going to go handheld. I want to show you a couple things that I did to the machine just so that you know where it sits as far as the kit itself. And then we'll just go through the cons, the pros, and a few suggestions that I have. And through that conversation, you'll get to learn more and what I think about this machine and the things that I have come across. Before we dive deep, this printer kit was sent to me by Fisec. No money was exchanged hands. They are going to be seeing this video and they have seen all the live streams at the same time as you guys are. So there's nothing that they uh, needed me to say or wanted me to say, none of that kind of stuff. Uh, but I got to say that it's going to be very hard for me to not be biased about this machine because I've spent so much time, I've put so much time and love and effort into it. I've really made it my own and just configured it and I'm still just enjoying using it so much. So keep that in mind while you watch this video. I really, really like this machine and because of that, you know, I'm going to try really hard to give you all of the cons as I kind of uh, stumble upon them, but it's going to be hard for me to be extremely negative about the machine because I love it so much. So just keep that in mind, just try to be honest with you. All right, let me get the camera, let me show you around. All right, so to get us started, I'm over here in Fluid. I made something called the Maintenance Mode Macro, and I just went ahead and initiated it and basically moves the bed all the way down. I'll explain in a second once we get to the machine. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn all of the LEDs on white uh, so that we can see what we're looking at in the printer because they go red when everything is done just for that super cool aesthetic. 
All right, let's go jump back to the printer. All right, so let's just start with the outside here. One of the first things I did to kind of make it my own is to put my logos in a couple of areas. One, I did the uh, different door hinges. Uh, these are not print in place, and I highly suggest you use these instead. I'll, I'll have some links down in the description, but the reason for them is they open much, much easier than the print in place version, so I highly suggest them. And the doors feel a little flimsy without uh, the door handle it makes it just a little bit easier you're kind of getting fingerprint prints all over this thing anyway so the door handle is a little bit better the other thing that i did here by the way this is maintenance mode or at least what i call maintenance mode i make the bed move all the way down to the bottom to get the weight to the bottom and the print head to the back uh, center and i'll explain why it's mostly because of the printed parts that are on the back but i'll go over that in a second uh, one of the other two things that you see that i did here is one i made a custom uh, stealth burner here as you can see and actually the LED might be a little too bright for the camera to see but I made my own logo there with some LEDs and I have white on the bottom when it's printing uh, and uh, red uh, there on the top as well as uh, this uh, filtration system by uh, next gen and I'll have a link for that as well you can find it on printables uh, this is basically kind of like nevermore except you can put this into a few different areas uh, there is activated carbon inside and it sucks in air from those two 15 5015s and blows them out this way it helps circulate the air the air in here so if you want to um, uh, heat this up to ABS temperature that helps to go a little bit faster there's also a filtration system in the back that goes out and I'll show you that in a second the other thing that's a little bit different here than the base kit is these LEDs that you see at the top. I had some scrap uh, LEDs left over, some strips, uh, so I went ahead and printed uh, these um, little holders with separators just to keep the lights from not hitting us in the eyes right now and most of it being uh, forced onto the plate as you can see it's very bright when the build plate is right over here and you can fully control their colors i have uh red on the bottom under there and i'll show you under in a second uh which is really cool and it helps you kind of personalize this machine one of the other things i did here this machine itself printed uh these handles which came out really really nice they're super robust and i highly suggest you print handles for the kit because this thing is huge you got to have the space for it it's heavy and having those handles makes it really easy to grab and do stuff all right that's the front let's move on to the back all right so around the back of the machine here we see the filtration system in here i have a hepa filter i actually took it from a cars uh filter from from the interior and chopped it up and i have two in here stacked on top and i have this fan on at a very low i think 10 percent when i'm printing abs and it helps just pull uh the smell out from the machine while the filter inside is filtering and circulating the air inside and that has helped uh, the ABS profile quite a bit actually. The other thing that we see here is this was an add-on I did. A lot of the add-ons so far have been you know free uh, printable add-ons uh, so not to you know change the kit itself too much outside of my hot uh, my uh, hot end that I put in there but that's that's beside the point it's very similar to what comes with the kit. Um, but what this does is let me show you so first of all make sure that your Raspberry Pi is off. Uh, let's go ahead and kick the machine off. I'll go ahead and pull this. And I suggest you do this anytime you work with electronics. But uh, let me go ahead and take these two handles. I need two hands. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave this, lean this machine backwards and I'll show you what it ends up doing. All right, so there you go. All I did was just lean it back like I just said. And what this does is it essentially gives you a nice place for you to work on your printer without uh, anything leaning on uh, the filtration system. And as you can see, you can leave your filament where it was without it interfering. And on this side, if we take a look, here we have access to all of our electronics. Actually, let me wrap around and I'll show you from there. All right, here's a little bit of a better view of what it looks like down here. As you can see, it's pretty neat and tidy and it makes management of all of these things very, very easy. One of the other things that I did in here is I added a fan right over here to blow on the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi does not come with any heat sinks and the fan uh, it runs from its three volt. It's a five volt fan running on three volts. So it's pretty much silent completely and it's always on and the Raspberry Pi stays at right around 35-ish uh, C with 
this fan always on, which is very, very nice. Without it, it was getting in the uh, mid 50s, even seeing 60s just sitting around. So I highly suggest you grab a fan like that and a little printable um, uh, piece just like this. It makes it nice and easy. Otherwise, outside of LEDs, everything in here should be uh, how it came with the machine. And I just love these tracks. They hide all of the wiring in there and there's a lot of wires in here. Uh, but we'll go over uh, some of the stuff in the pros and cons. I just kind of wanted to show it to you uh, in here so that you get a feel for what this is. And there actually, you see right there, is all of that is not dirt or smudges that's actually scratches on the top panel uh, from this uh, PTFE tube uh, moving around and kind of scraping it. Kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. It's not a big deal to me. You don't see it when it's on the top. All right, now that you have a better idea for all the things that I have done, well, let's jump into the cons, pros, and, pros and suggestions. All right, let's just jump right into the cons. Now, these aren't in any particular order. I just wrote them down as they kind of came to me, but I tried to be as thorough as possible, so let's just go over them. So one of the first things I noticed, I remember, is I was kind of disappointed that the fans were not dual ball bearing fans. The rest of the kit was so high quality, I was genuinely surprised that they weren't dual ball bearing. I think they're hydraulic. Now, with that said, is the 60 millimeter fans that I've put in to the bottom and the outside fan uh, in the back uh, have definitely worked flawlessly. They're not that loud. Uh, they're just on par with what I would have thought that those type of fans would make that type of sound. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with them in general and they did not cause any issues. So that's worth noting that obviously I haven't had the machine that long, but so far they've been okay. But I was kind of disappointed not to see uh, dual ball bearing uh, fans, especially for the afterburner. Mind you, I have the stealth burner in here, but you know, the kit comes with an afterburner. So it had all of the hardware for that. Anyway, fans, not dual ball bearing you know, could go either way. The chains are just stuffed with wires. So as you guys might have seen in, uh, in the build, all of the wiring in this very basic kit of this machine or the basic version of this machine, all the wire from the tool head and the X and Y uh, stops, all of those wires go through the looms, go through the cable chains, starting here all the way, going back in the, this way and then down the machine and onto the bottom. Uh, there's a lot of options nowadays that you can choose for there for, for that But this machine comes with those cable chains just stuffed and I actually had a few issues I had wires break inside the chains But with that said both of the wires that broke inside the chains were completely my fault One was the LEDs LED wires. They required three wires, you know for the RGB um, and I tried to use just a bunch of different wires that I had that I soldered together and they broke at the solder joints inside. Um, the other thing that broke was the uh, one of the fans on the hot end and that was yet again the fan uh, wire that I put together myself with a solder uh, joint and the solder broke inside the wire again. Uh, while I was doing some research I also learned that uh, for cable chains, you're supposed to buy a certain type of wire and I was using just any scrap wire that I had. So my issue uh, definitely was just, you know, self-caused. But uh, with that said, the wires are just, you know, the, the chains are just chock full of wire. So that would definitely make maintenance a little bit harder. Like I said, there's ways to fix that. There's all sorts of CAN bus and USB interfaces. Uh, they have PCBs that uh, attach to the tool uh, tool. Uh, head that, and that let you simplify the wiring significantly nowadays and they're very inexpensive around 30 bucks gets you all of those uh, options and you can choose from them and they make wiring a lot easier but as the kit comes as this kit comes there's so many wires in those cable chains so just something to keep in mind the printed diagram that was included with this kit was for a 2.4 and not for a trident I know this is a little, uh, little thing to note, but uh, it was a really nice printout. It had everything that you need for the machine, and it would have been really nice to just be at the work area, even working on it in some cases, just to kind of see a, as a reference point of where you need to run something or where to plug something in uh, while you're searching for it. And because it was from FISEC, everything was labeled and very nice on, on there. And it is actually, the right diagram is the one that I used to kind of follow along uh, through the build, uh, but it would have been nice to have it printed as well. Obviously so you can print it yourself, but it came with the kit and it was kind of a surprise to find a 2.4 uh, printout in a Trident box with Trident parts in it. So just something to note. Uh, it was hard to find a printer CFG 
that match this base kit. There are a bunch out there and most of them have you go through and manually put in your configuration, which I totally understand. That's how I did it. That's how everyone else has done it. But it would just be so nice if Fisec made a predetermined con a config file that's available for this kit. They know what they're including into this box. There should be literally an out of the box uh, CFG that just uses these parts. Now I ended up putting a stealth burner, so that would have been on me to change some of those configurations. But if I just stuck with completely with their kit, the way that they designed it uh, and included in the box, it would be so nice to have turnkey uh, um, you know, configuration files, especially because they're kind of already there just all over the place and in several areas. It would just be really nice for people like me that have never done it before. Now, with that said, now that I have built this and I uh, have a better understanding of Clipper, I'm still not gonna say that I know much about it. Uh, there's still so, so much to learn. I just know the general basics and how to set some things up like camp and whatnot. Um, but uh, now I think I'll have a much, much easier time with that portion. But it would have just been so nice if, uh, you know, Fisec for, or, or anyone else for that matter, uh, just had a CFG uh, that kind of said, you know, Fisec Trident Kit 300, here's that example CFG. It just would be nice, especially with options like um, uh, centralist homing for example anyway I know that might be too much to ask on a completely custom machine that you're kind of supposed to uh, make your own but still it would be nice to have a couple uh, turnkey options there for people like myself just to make it a little easier the rolls of insulated tape that came with the kit are double-sided and make it very hard to take panels off this was also another surprise so all of the panels have this insulation tape on them because you want this to be you know a heated chamber it is actually sealed off quite a bit even these doors that don't have insulation go flat up against everything so everything is really really sealed on this kit uh, and with that said the double-sided uh, tape does do that portion very well it seals everything off however because it is double-sided it makes it hard to maintain things. I needed to get into the chains and it was really difficult to take off the panels. At one point I thought I was gonna break them trying to pull them off so much. And uh, the kit uh, is designed to have these um, pieces all over these sides and the top and everywhere in the back so that you can take off uh, and take off to pop off the glass very easily. If that double-sided tape wasn't double-sided, if it was single-sided foam, it would make this so, so much easier. And as I was working on it and building it, some people in my chat on the live streams were saying that theirs was not double-sided. So I don't know if that was just a mistake or what it was, but worth noting that mine was double-sided and I installed it the way it is. Um, and it, it, made, it made maintenance just a little bit more difficult. I'm sure it'll still come into play as I own this machine and tweak it and use it to print. But, you know, it's worth noting that that was double-sided. And the last one on here is the print bed came with a thermal fuse installed and another thermal fuse in the box and it was very confusing. So there was actually two moments uh, during the install where I was confused for a long period of time. One was finding the right ground wire for the bed and that's when I discovered that there is this, this photo that Fisec uh, shows you uh, where you kind of can't tell at first if you're just glancing at it but the longer you look at it the more you realize that every single wire is labeled which was kind of like one of the best tools that made wiring so much easier on this machine so it's finding that initial ground wire that I was confused about but then this uh, the bed that I got in the bed that's already attached uh, to the um, to the aluminum sheet there has a thermal fuse already in it you can see it you can feel it however they, they you know also include one in the box and you include it in the, in the instructions and in the official Vaughn instructions so it's very confusing you don't necessarily need or want two of them on there uh, so you could just leave it off but I, I spent quite a bit of time figuring that out because that wasn't in the instructions and it was included in the box so that was just kind of confusing uh, the other only other thing is I still have a wire uh, that's uh, it, that came in the kit that I don't quite understand what it's for. I wasn't used for anything, but it's like a nice long uh, two uh, red and black wire that's combined together with a three prong on the back. But I, I still haven't figured out uh, what that was for, and it's not used. So that's really the cons. I tried to nitpick as much as I could. Like I said, I'm obviously attached to this machine, uh, but even still, I'm sure I'll, I'll come up with more problems uh, or, or, or potential cons as I use the kit. But so far in the build, the only main thing was it just took a long time and this thing requires space. 
So those are kind of like the most, the worst parts about the kit. As these cons that I just listed, the fact that it's so large and the fact that you have to build it and it takes a lot of time, especially to program and then configure. But that's just Clipper for you, that's just how it is. But once you understand Clipper, I, going back to anything else seems kind of funny. Uh, you have that level of control. All right, with those things out of the way, let's move into the very brief uh, uh, but important pros list. All right, let's jump in. All right, pros. First one I have on the list is the kit came with a Raspberry Pi 4. That was a crazy moment uh, in the live stream uh, coming to the realization that it had one. Uh, when I found out that I was getting this kit, I got myself a CB1 from Big Tree Tech thinking that I was going to be using that, but it came with one and I took a look on the uh, Fisec um, uh, store and there's options for with and without a Raspberry Pi. So if you don't have one, you can purchase one. They're still expensive or you can uh, skip the Raspberry Pi in the kit. But I was really excited to know uh, that the Raspberry Pi uh, came with the kit as well as a whole bunch of other um, kind of really high end uh, things like for example the spider uh, board that was that was way higher quality than I expected uh, their own custom drivers that are 2209s with their own little branding on it there's just a lot of things in the kit uh, that surprised me in terms of their quality the next thing that related to quality is the extrusions that was another thing I noticed when putting these things together uh, is uh, the extrusions were actually anodized after they were cut. I've put together many, many machines, and let me tell you, majority of them are just cut, uh, cleaned up, and then you know, uh, drilled, uh, uh, tapped, put aside. But these things, uh, they're super, super clean. They have a very nice, smooth texture to them. They don't have that matte texture. They're nice and uh, nice and straight. They're just really high quality extrusions that came with the kit, and they come uh, in their own individual wraps. Uh, so they're very secure. Uh, when they're being shipped. One of the most important pros of this uh, kit was the hardware kit that it came with. It basically comes with every single screw and bolt and, and, and nut and washer, every single thing that you need here. One of the best parts about it was all of the T-nuts have a spring and ball system on them so that you can just pop it into the extrusion and it stays. Obviously, there's still a bunch of regular T-nuts where you put them uh, on and you have to turn with the Allen key for it to kind of rotate inside of the channel and then hold. But the majority of the ones that were difficult during the build or would have been difficult were have the, have the ball detents. So you can just pop them into their place, put them where they need to go and go ahead and put the kit together. That type of stuff made this so, so much more enjoyable to build. And that's why I'm really looking forward to doing another one is because I just want to see how clever uh, all of the other kits get. Um, and at the end of the day, I still have a bunch of hardware left over, at least enough to do modifications and more maintenance and whatever else that I might want to do to this machine. There's still plenty left over in the box, which is really cool. And you get a nice, neat uh, organizer in case you don't already have one. One of the other major upsides to this kit was that all the wires were not only pre-crimped, but they were also color-coded. I mentioned that document that they have, the picture that they have, uh, that has all of the connections labeled on it. That's when I realized uh, how useful that is. It's literally all of the wiring down to each connector is not only labeled, uh, but also color-coded. So the dreaded wiring was not so dreaded. I actually really, really enjoyed it. Um, because the kit made it that 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 much easier if I was sourcing this it would definitely be significantly harder but as you guys will see in the suggestion sections I have some notes about the wiring itself the other thing is the site itself and their github is just full of resources wiring diagrams photos Everything that you might need to answer a question that you might have, you can find there. Uh, even Voron themselves have some five sec sections on their wikis uh, that kind of give you some help. But the, but the GitHub itself is just so uh, packed with information on these kits. They've also been around for a little while now, so there's just a lot of information. So uh, more than likely you can get your answer there without searching too deep through old Reddit that doesn't work or something along those lines. Uh, so that was very nice and that also made the build a little bit easier, which I appreciated. There's lots of options at purchase for mods, prints, upgrades, etc. It's an extremely versatile kit. So yes, 
on the, uh, I mentioned this briefly, but on their website, you can get printed parts or CNC parts, or if you wanted to add a stealth burner like I did, you can just add the stealth burner kit, to, uh, to, uh, the stealth burner assembly to this, and it gives you all of the parts that you might need for it, all the fans, etc. Uh, there's just lots for this machine. It is, uh, it is just endless how far you can take it, which is really cool. But one of the best parts is it works really well with just the way that it is. And the headroom that you have for upgrades is literally endless. You can do whatever you want with it, take it to any direction, use it in whichever way that you want. If you wanna just print fast PLA, you can build it that way. Don't put panels on, put larger uh, fans on this thing and away you go. You wanna print engineering uh, grade stuff, go ahead and build it enclosed. Go ahead and put a heater in there, recirculate your air, get a special type of bed. You can just do whatever you want. Uh, you don't have to just pick from somebody's list or from someone's predetermined setup. It is totally up to you uh, with this machine. And that's kind of where it leads me to the last pro that I have written here is the endless possibilities, literally. One of the things with this machine is the limitations aren't some company. The limitations with this machine are literally you. It's how far, how much time you want to spend, how far you want to go, which mods you want to do, what you're interested in. Uh, you can limit it in whichever way you want or you can make it unlimited in whichever way you want. You can build it with different dimensions if you really wanted to. Uh, that's why I think this is really, really special. And having that guidance of a kit, uh, such as this FISA kit, I think is pretty major. It has definitely opened up uh, my eyes, not only to the genre, but Voron and the way that they design things in general. Uh, but also it has given me a whole new light on 3D printers and the way that they're made uh, and how they're configured out of the box, especially some of the newer ones that are similar in features and behave similar to this one. It has definitely given me um, a different, a little bit of a different uh, look, uh, outlook on those machines. And I definitely have a different uh, grown respect uh, for those machines after, you know, literally trying to do it myself, essentially. So one of the things here is you kind of hone it in. And once you have it done, these things should be rock solid, reliable. That's what everyone says, right? And that's what I'm hoping to get to. Right now, I'm really happy with ABS, but I'll be really definitely excited to get uh, PLA, TPU, and especially the very elusive, uh, for me at least, PETG. All right, let's move into the suggestions. All right, so suggestions then. Uh, the reason for these things is I want to try to help you guys save uh, some uh, headaches uh, or maybe give you some ideas on how to improve the machine a little bit of ahead of time because I've run into some things and I know some things now that I would have done differently and plan on doing uh, to this machine to make it that much better that would have been easier during the build than after. Uh, so that's kind of what I want to talk about here. That's the point of the suggestions section. So the first thing, for example, is if you want to do stealth burner, which I suggest because it has a little bit better uh, cooling for PLA, for example, is if you want to go stealth burner, I accidentally printed clockwork too, which is fine if you want to buy a different stepper. But if you want to just keep everything, the only thing you would need for a clockwork one uh, stealth burner is just a 5015 fan that's not included in the kit because it comes with a 4020 fan for a um, afterburner. So if you want a stealth burner, print the one that's for CW1, Clockwork 1, and that will uh, let you use the existing stepper uh, motor that comes with this kit and everything else, the gears will all fit and everything will work. The only difference would be outside of the 5015 fan is just uh, you, you need to print those files instead of the afterburner. So I wish I did that earlier so I didn't have to, you know, in the beginning of the build buy yet another uh, stepper motor to put on the back of this. It just would have been, uh, you know, better because it came with the kit. Uh, it's not a big deal. Um, yes, those the driver that came with with this not driver the stepper motor is a little bit heavier than the one that's in this Clockwork Two, uh, and there are some improvements here over Clockwork One. But the way that the kit came is just for you to save some money, and the only main difference outside of just the cost of a single fan uh, would be just to print some different files in order to get some better cooling. So that that would be my suggestion uh, if I was to build this kit again. That's how I would have done it. The other thing is I would purchase 100%. I would purchase either the PCBs, the toolhead PCBs, or the CAN bus or USB 
uh, modules to reduce wiring. I would 100% do that. Fisec themselves has one for $27 that comes with everything you need, comes with pre-crimped wiring that helps you reduce this wiring that goes through the chains dramatically. And the maintenance becomes so, so much easier because uh, on the tool head, if a fan breaks, you don't need to cut the wire, take the whole wire out. There's just a PCB on the side of your tool head. You just pop it off, change the fan, put it back on and you're done. I would, I would 100% do that and I plan on doing that to this machine uh, for longevity in case something else goes wrong. Maintenance would be just so, so much easier. So definitely at a minimum uh, tool head PCBs and uh, very likely at least what I'm doing is I'm doing a USB uh, interface uh, so that it just runs a USB cable power and ground to the tool head, no other wiring and the rest just goes to the Raspberry Pi. Obviously that would be significantly better than the 20 or so wires that are going through these cable chains. So that's definitely a suggestion that I have. Uh, and you know, doing the research before one of these builds is definitely important. So that's, uh, I, I figured that'd be nice for me to mention. All right, so get yourself a machinist square for easy alignment. This was definitely something that I should have done from uh, day one. I did it a little bit late, and in fact, I bought the wrong one, and I thought it was so funny I kept it. I bought a really small one by accident. I thought it said 150 millimeter, but it was like 50 millimeter. So it was a really, really small little uh, machinist square, but I use it throughout the whole build. Not only would it have been useful to square, uh, help square off the... Um, uh, all of the 2020 extrusions, but then later you can use it for all sorts of things, even like uh, cooling down the plastic immediately after pressing in a uh, heat press insert, for example. Just little things. Uh, definitely get yourself one of them. They're inexpensive and it'll definitely help you with this build. The other thing that I would suggest is, is suggest is to skip installing the X and Y end stops and just use sensorless homing. It goes back to the thing I was just talking about uh, before the machine is square, the PCBs and the wiring. It'll just help you not have wires in the cable chains and just dramatically uh, uh, simplify this machine. Uh, let's see if I talked about the other one. Yeah, so the other thing, that, speaking of uh, sensors, is I would skip installing the Z-limit switch as well and just use the inductive probe for uh, Z, uh, Z-tilt, and mesh. Uh, that's what I'm doing on this machine. I'm getting quite literally flawless first layers. I haven't touched it literally ever since the beginning, and I have it probe. I have it do Z-tilt, and then I installed something called Camp, which I'll go in over in a second, and it probes just the area it needs very quickly uh, around the print area, and then it prints uh, in a random spot on the bed that's available uh, just to help you maintain uh, your bed surface there. And uh, that will uh, eliminate literally three switches, which have at least two wires a piece. So as you can imagine, that's empty connectors on your board, that's empty uh, you know, uh, chains or just remove the chains at that point. And uh, this machine comes with 2209, so it's very capable of running uh, uh, sensorless homing. Obviously, if you've never set that up before, it is definitely uh, at least difficult looking. Uh, from what I understand and what I've been told, I haven't done it yet on this, I'm gonna do it when I do the tool head, is uh, it's just some, some copy and paste and then uh, making sure you have a couple settings correct for your particular machine. I know why they included these things because it is unsafe to copy someone else's um, essential is homing settings because every single machine is going to be slightly different uh, on the highs and lows of where the stepper driver needs to be uh, or the stepper motor and stepper driver need to be so i totally understand but if it was me doing this again i would just not install any of those stops and i would configure it in clipper uh, and take my time there and just avoid all of the wiring because it's, it's capable of being simpler and simple in this case is good all right, and the only other thing that I have on here, oh, two things, two things. Uh, one is check teamfdm.com and printables for mods, uh, such as the handles, for example, I got there, the better hinges I got on a print, a team FDM, et cetera, like the, the things that lean the printer back and help you uh, with maintenance or even just setup instead of scratching up your panels and laying this thing down all the time. There's so many printable free modifications for this. They're more, not, not so much modifications even, they're just enhancements. They make the experience better, they make the printer better, and over time as these things existed, a lot of people have chipped into the project and have made it so much better. So before you're done printing all of your parts, 
I would definitely suggest checking out teamfdm.com and printables and seeing what kind of things are around there. Maybe you'll find something cool that you just cannot live without. And uh, there's definitely a ton in my two print uh, collection uh, at this moment in time. So to save you guys some time, I highly suggest you doing that. And the last one on here is Setup Camp. Camp is spelled K. A M P. I don't remember off the top of my head what it stands for ever, but it essentially what it does is it does kind of three things. Uh, one is it probes the bed only in the spots that you need it based on the size of your print. So instead of running an entire bed mesh before a print that does the entire bed, this is a large machine at 300. There's even larger versions of 350. It only does what it needs. So if you're printing a benchy, it's only going to do a couple uh, uh, meshes, a couple points of mesh right there where it needs to print, and then it's going to print there, which is very nice. The second thing that it does is it adapts. Uh, it finds a different spot on the bed to print. So for example, if you're just continuously doing benchies, it's going to continuously print in the center of your bed and potentially ruin that spot or something along those lines. This kind of moves the print around uh, an available spot on the bed so that uh, you don't uh, destroy any one part of your bed. And it does such a great job with, uh, with uh, you know, just finding the, the right spot uh, of where it needs to make its mesh that I have not had a single issue with that whatsoever. And the third and final thing that this does uh, is it makes a uh, extrusion right before uh, the print just to kind of purge uh, the filament that's in the hot end. So it makes a purge line really close to the print uh, just to get you going without any kind of fuss uh, or anything along those lines. And actually there was just a very recent update uh, to camp itself that made setup even easier. You don't even need to copy and paste things into, uh, into a bunch of different files. It's literally just you follow a few little lines of installation and you're good to go. So it's 100% uh, definitely do in my, in my personal opinion. Uh, camp. It's just uh, just a modification to these things or just a setup or configuration rather on these things that I would just highly, highly suggest. All right, let's head into the summary. All right, so that has been my uh, overview of the FISEC kit and everything that I have gone through with it. Like I said, there's going to be links for a bunch of useful information. If you guys want to build one of these things, check out some of those live feeds I did. I know some of them are potentially uh, too long for some people, depending on how into uh, these things you are. Also, I spent a lot of time talking to my members and kind of, you know, spending time in the chat and answering questions. So things are definitely longer than me just being heads down uh, and and printing this machine but hopefully I did it in small sections enough to where if you're interested in a certain t uh, type of information you can find that particular stream jump in there and get your answer or maybe see some something I stumbled with and maybe just avoid doing that because uh, so far everything that I've stumbled on I've kind of picked up in the next one or towards the end and have been able to fix it and I'm very 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 happy with this kit I'm very excited on continuing to use it this has been my go-to machine at the moment there's also some machines behind me that I've been using as well while I've been using this one but it just there's nothing uh, that kind of stops me from wanting to use this machine so far all of the annoyances that some other machines could have uh, they're just not present here because you set this up the way that you like so you literally make the machine that you've wanted so that is definitely uh, something that I'm looking forward to not only in this kit uh, but in other kits as well and I'm just really happy to know that fi the FISEC one uh, was just you know way better than I expected I remember very initially I thought it was just going to be a bunch of parts uh, kind of put together in a box uh, that were the cheapest possible and uh, I was definitely pleasantly surprised and I am still every single day when I use this and I see the quality that it is able to print uh, now that everything is set up so I'm very, very happy with the FISEC kit. So if you're interested in purchasing one of these, I will have links down in the description. I believe at the moment, the cheapest place to buy it is their AliExpress store. However, they do have an official site. You should definitely check it out. Between the two, there are some shipping costs. And I think on AliExpress, some of the kits are free depending on the options that you choose. So definitely check it out. Another thing about AliExpress is uh, the official store uh, at least has coupon codes on holidays and all sorts of different uh, things from the store itself so most of the time it is cheaper than the price that it is listed on so definitely check the links
links down in the description. All right, as always, thank my YouTube members. You guys get to see these videos early. Hopefully you guys continue uh, and enjoying that. Same with my Patreon members. You literally help fund this channel and the things that I do here. So a huge thank you to both of those. I do plan on doing some more exclusive stuff like exclusive um, exclusive uh, live streams for the YouTube members and Patreon members uh, together, things along those lines. So just want to thank you uh, yet again for that. All right, guys, I think that's all for me for today. I'm going to get back to printing. And as always, I'll see you all in the comments. Later.